Hello everybody, welcome to A British Audio File and I hope you're well. If you're new to this channel and we haven't met before, my name is Taron. This is my first news feature of 2022, so I'd just like to share with you what's piqued my interest in terms of new releases of Hi-Fi products over the last couple of months. So let's not waste any time and get stuck in. At the end of October 2021, Q Acoustics added three new speakers to their concept range. The two-way Concept 30 stand mount retails for £899, €1,199, Euros, $1 Euros, dollars The Concept 50 floor stander has an MTM configuration and retails for £1,999, €2,599, Euros, $2,999. US dollars. There's also a center channel to complete the mini series, the Concept 90, which is priced at £649, €849, Euros, $999. US dollars. They're nicely positioned, on average a little over double the price of the Concept 20, 40 and center, and typically less than half the price of the flagship Concept 300 stand mount and 500 floor stander. I should point out that according to Q Acoustics, these new speakers are much closer in terms of design and sound to the range topping concepts than they are to the ones below. Certainly seems to be the case when you look at aspects of the design. Hopefully I'll get to test that claim in terms of sound quality at some point too. There are a number of key technologies trickling down from the 300-500 into the 30-50-90. The 3mm aluminium baffle plate to which the drivers are mounted is not only there for aesthetics, but also to provide additional rigidity. It's a nice visual contrast to the cabinets, which are available in three finishes, gloss white, gloss black, and gloss silver. Internally, Q Acoustics have gone to town to minimize unwanted vibrations, as they did on their more expensive siblings. Point-to-point -point bracing, so it's only placed where it's necessary to improve cabinet stiffness whilst maintaining maximum internal volume. The MDF sandwich comprises a non-setting gel cool layer that absorbs some of the cabinet resonances and dissipates them as heat. A variation of the isolation base found in the 300-500, a less sophisticated spring system is understandable given the price, but it's still supposed to decouple the speakers and reduce interference to and from external surfaces. There are all new drivers with a 1 inch 25mm tweeter which is hermetically sealed and mechanically isolated from the baffle. They increase the voice coil of the 5 inch 125 mm bass driver from 25.4 mm to 30.5 mm. The improved motor strength is supposed to increase the power handling by 50%. I've reviewed the Concept 300 and it's a very good sounding speaker, just not quite class leading when it comes to clarity. I have to be honest though, I do think it's a touch pricey at around two and a half grand. Understandable, even totally justifiable when you look at the superb finish, the complexity of design, as well as the innovative technologies that go into that speaker. A lot of those technologies seem to be present in this new range of speakers. So if for some reason they've managed to squeeze out 80% of the performance at around 40% of the price, that would be very, very interesting. Okay, so I think you probably need to be sitting down for this next one. If you've got very deep pockets and a few hundred thousand pounds to throw at an amplifier, Griffin Audio have got a new range of products to help lighten your load. The Danish brand founded by Fleming E. Rasmussen in 1985 has a solid reputation for manufacturing high-end products, but nothing before has been as ambitious as this. The Apex power amplifiers are available in stereo and mono form, the mono amplifiers weigh in at 900 pounds or 408 kilograms for the pair, whilst the stereo power amp is a featherly 450 pounds, 204 kilograms. The monoblocks are reputed to be able to deliver 1800 watts of pure class A power into a one ohm load. What else would you expect with a total of 128 bipolar output transistors, four separate custom made 2000 VA toroidal transformers, two per chassis, and over two million microfarads of capacitance. That's two farads of capacitance. The dual mono balance, dual differential, zero negative feedback, pure class A design features Griffin's automatic green bias technology to improve efficiency so you don't dim the lights to the entire neighborhood 
whilst you're chilling out listening to Cat Stevens' Where Do the Children Play? The whole thing is housed in a constrained layer damp chassis utilising non-magnetic materials to minimise electrical interference. Oh, and the price. The Apex monoblocks come in at €165,000 for a pair or US dollars Too much? Well, for exactly half that price, you could get the stereo version. And because you're unlikely to be feeding this a signal from your SMSL DAC, there's a matching preamplifier. Well, of course there is. Priced at €50,500 or US dollars is the Commander preamplifier. The dual mono layout featuring a Class A input buffer is lifted straight out the highly regarded Pandora model that now sits below it in the model range. The signal passes through as few electrical components as possible, just two transistors and a resistor in the pursuit of transparency and, as is the case with the Apex power amplifiers, employs zero negative feedback. Griffin claims that the Commander has advancements over the Pandora in many sonically critical areas. For example, the Commander's voltage reference is approximately 50 times lower than the Pandora's. The separate chassis housing the power supply is a fully discrete linear affair with four 36VA custom-made toroidal transformers, one to power each channel, two reserved for upcoming Griffin source components. Users may interface via the supplied IR remote control or the 4.3-inch TFT touchscreen display, whether to simply adjust the volume or customise setup through the menus. I think I'm fairly safe in saying we're in the middle of a resurgence of these wide front baffle retro looking speakers. So what's the appeal? Well, there's the 1970s styling for starters. I think they look pretty cool in a modern minimalist environment, perhaps with a sideboard with a turntable plonked on top. And then there's the easeful dynamics associated with big bass drivers of high sensitivity. What's the downside? Well, there's a reason why manufacturers moved away from those design to narrow front baffle design primarily the edge diffraction issues that mess up stereo imaging and sound stage. And also, by having multiple drivers of a smaller size, they stop and start more quickly, which improves the bass transient response. British speaker brand Mission, part of IAG, didn't want to miss out. They reinvented a classic speaker, the 770, the original conceived by Farad Azima, Mission's founder, one year after its inception in 1977. Peter Como, Director of Acoustic Design at IAG, may not be a household name amongst the hi-fi buying public the way that Andrew Jones is. However, he's one of the most prolific speaker designers in the world, a 40 plus year career where he's been responsible for some very successful speakers from Haybrook, Wharfdale and Mission itself. Farad was always tweaking the original design. He did his due diligence when it came to measurements but believed extensively in listening swapping a component or making an alteration here or there until it sounded what he considered to be right. The intention was clear to produce a monitor class speaker at a relatively affordable price, an evolution from where BBC engineers had taken things a decade earlier. The 770 was one of the first speakers featuring a polypropylene driver cone. The new 770 is no facsimile of the past. Yes, it has a 200mm 8-inch polypropylene midwoofer, a 25mm 1-inch soft dome tweeter and the famous white painted baffle. But it's an all-new design. For instance, instead of the thin side panels damped by bitumen pads, the new speaker has a thicker sandwich construction of MDF and particle board bonded by a layer of high damping glue. Peter has a similar design philosophy to Farad. His extensive listening sessions led him and his team to try out more than 120 different circuit iterations in the tuning process. Peter claims that the new speaker builds on the mid-range quality of the original but performs much better at the frequency extremes. What's nice to see is that this new speaker was designed, engineered and will be built in the UK at IAG's new expanded Huntingdon facility. I've talked about an amplifier costing the best part of a quarter of a million pounds in this episode. And that's just for two monoblocks. There's going to be people out there looking to buy amp, even try amp that sucker. The mind boggles. In any case, time for a little bit of balance, some natural yin and yang to the hi-fi universe. Let's discuss something a little bit more down to earth. 
Acoustic Energy has just announced its revised entry range of speakers. It's a ground up overhaul, not a minor facelift, featuring all new drivers designed to improve response and have better power handling. The new 25mm 1 inch fabric dome tweeter sits in a revised waveguide with what they've learned developing the flagship 500 series. The tweeter is supposed to have better dispersion and now sits closer to the mid woofer for better integration. The paper cone mid base woofers have increased from 110 millimeters, four and a third inches, to 130 millimeters, five and a quarter inches, which brings a few benefits, including increased power handling. In order to maintain the elegant slim aesthetic, out goes the MDF cabinet and in comes HDF, high density fiber board, a first at this price. It's allowed acoustic energy to reduce the thickness of the walls from 18 millimeters to 15 millimeters without compromising mass or stiffness. The external volume has only increased by 15% whilst the internal volume has increased by 30%. More volume means deeper bass response. All models are available in a choice of satin white, black or walnut vinyl veneer finishes. The two-way stand mount A200 Mark II retails for £259. You'll be parting with £599 for the Svelte A109 Mark II. The two and a half way floor stander has two of those mid-base drivers. Home cinema enthusiasts need not be disappointed with a dedicated centre channel. The A107 Mark II costs £229. You'll have to wait until the spring for the range topping A120 Mark II. The three way design has a dedicated driver for mid frequencies as well as two to handle bass duties. It will set you back £799. The summer should see the arrival of a subwoofer to complete the range. The AE108 Mark II is a sealed box downward firing affair with a 250mm 10 inch high excursion doped and stiffened paper cone. Prices yet to be confirmed. So that's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments section what you think of the products that I've featured. And also, if there's any products that have caught your eye over the last few months, I'd love to hear about those too. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, hit that like button, share it. If you like what I'm doing with this channel and you haven't subscribed already, do consider subscribing. It does help this channel to grow. Hit that bell notification so you know when new videos arrive. And check me out on Patreon for consultancy services to access bonus content, which is exclusive to Patreon, as well as video calls where we get to chat face-to-face -face sometimes. But for today, for now, The British Audiophile, signing off.